Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Life Bulb Live. Hi. Hi. And we are super excited to be here. You know, the holidays are over. Some people are like, phew. Other people are like, oh. And living with a chronic illness can change your perspective on the holidays. It can change it for the good. It can change it for the bad. But no matter what, you are exhausted after the holidays for a variety of reasons. So today with the CEO of Life Bulb, Karin, and our good friend, Cody, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So Karin, do you want to jump in and just maybe say a few things? And then Cody will give you a chance to chat about it. Well, thank you, Anne Marie. I'm I'm excited to be part of this chat. And um, uh, you know, holidays for me uh, it's it's obviously something that I always look forward to. I I, I think that uh, being with family, celebrating uh, something that is part of culture, you know, to me it was about Christmas, and the Christmas is uh, where I come from the absolute biggest holiday of the year. I'm from Sweden. And uh, so it's joyful. Um, and New Year's probably a little bit less so. It's just another year. And um, uh, this year has been a very difficult one. But um, uh, I would say as a conclusion uh, to start this discussion today, um, I did come in yesterday to work with, I felt more energy. I felt that I had uh, re-energized over the holidays. I had taken a little bit of a step back. I always try to use the holidays to think a little bit more broadly about my life in general and uh, what I want to do with uh, the rest of my life. Um, and um, I had kind of concluded that last year was difficult, but it did um, offer some lessons and opportunities to uh, to learn. I I love that part of you because you really did encourage us all to take a step back and really regroup. And I thank you for that advice because I truly did need it. Sometimes you do need a reminder to rest yourself so you can recharge. We should rest when we're feeling good too, because that does, you know, play into our whole health, you know, scope. Cody, how did you go, go into the holidays? Well, I love the holidays too. And I think that because of the heaviness of 2020 and how everyone's feeling I kind of went like full holiday like I really let myself really get into it I listen to Christmas music a lot more we I'm actually Jewish but my husband's not and so we got a Christmas tree for the first time and I really just sort of allowed myself to really be in the holiday spirit as much as possible obviously you know resting when necessary feeling emotions that came up when necessary are all important things, but I just kind of embraced it. Um, it felt like a special one to really, I think one of the things that this year has highlighted for me is the importance of telling people you love them when you see them or when you're on the phone with them or on Zoom with them and really just being grateful for the people in my life. So that was a big theme for me this holiday season, really taking in and being present with who I could be present with and just sort of celebrating that. Um, I took a different perspective on it. I know we've talked about this a little bit. The holidays were really rough for me. I come from a very large Italian family and not being able to celebrate with each other the way that we normally did was difficult. We lost a matriarch of our family in the beginning of the year, not to COVID, but um, to Alzheimer's. And it was hard to not be able to be together and embrace each other. And to be honest with you, I didn't feel that great. And Going through the holidays when you don't feel good is hard enough. You know, we're pushing ourselves to the limit, um, but we are pushing. So getting through them is almost like a, a work and that's what we're trying to achieve, right? We're trying so hard to get through the holidays. And then I found myself January 2nd being like, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. And it was a letdown. And it wasn't just a letdown because I couldn't be around my family. It was a letdown because my body was telling me, you need to relax and you need to take some time to check in with yourself. Uh, and I think that's something that those of us who live with a chronic illness need to remember. We do have to check in with ourselves, even after th something's over with. Yeah, and there's yeah. often not enough time. There's not enough time to have that moment of relaxation because even if you're an extrovert, and I know you are, Anne-Marie, but uh, <laughs> even for those um, of us who may not be as extrovert, I love people, but for me to be in a social setting, I still, I put on my positive attitude and I, I uh, it does take some energy. So you do need to um, spend some time uh, just re-energizing internally as well. And for me, that means that I need to be alone a little bit. I need to just uh, 
read a book. I need to go for a walk. I, or watch even TV. Um, just do something that uh, allows you to process what has happened, or or maybe not process at all. Just just relax. Um, whatever that is. Yeah, and I think that's a, a wonderful point. Both holiday time and not holiday time. It is when you do live with a chronic illness, you're forced to become more aware of energy management and that you're not always gonna do that perfectly because there's gonna be times that you sacrifice your energy because you want to push yourself to be with an, in a gathering or to go out or you know, obviously this year is different, but whatever it is, but to just recognize that that energy management doesn't end just because the holidays are over. It means, it doesn't mean that Monday, you know, Monday, January 4th, it's like, all right, back to the races. It's like, no, you still have to, are constantly in a conversation with your body of resting and not resting. It doesn't follow a schedule. Like it's not resting because it's the holidays and working because it's work time. It You have to really, you know, live with that for at all times. But you know, I think that that is something that's, it's a really good point. And I, I just think back about how I personally deal with life in general. And I, I would say I'm super routine. Like mm -hmm. everything for me is a routine. So when I have a holiday where I get nervous, where I feel like I'm not doing well, as you said, Anne-Marie, physically or, or emotionally, and they're so linked, is when I lose my routines. Mm. So that means if I'm planning to have a lunch and there's suddenly a cake or something at 10, 11, I'm just really, it really bothers me. Like it bothers me that it, it, it moves my routine because I'm planning to have that meal at that time. And I think it's so ingrained in me because of diabetes for so many years that, and also diabetes 30 years ago is very different versus diabetes now where yeah. you have pumps and you, know, you, can, you can be more flexible. The flexibility for me is 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 a strain. Mm -hmm. I am not flexible as a person. <laughs> I agree with that with myself too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's that's actually bigger for the holidays too, because so many people. I know this year was different, but let's let's keep it a broad idea that you know COVID is not going to be around here forever. We're not going to yeah. be sequestered, but. When going through the holidays, you're eating differently. Yeah, you yeah. are not always on your schedule. You might even be having a cocktail here and there that, that you don't normally have. And now the holidays are over and you actually have to retrain your body to go back to eating the way you were, maybe making sure that you're taking your supplements the way you were. We were talking before about going to the doctors, making sure you're checking off those those boxes again for your health. And that is really important after the holidays, especially both for your mind and your body because they work together. And if we're not keeping up with those checks, we're, our body's gonna react to that 100% it's going to. And yeah. I found it with myself, I was eating cookies the way I shouldn't have been eating cookies. And I think this brings up for me something that I think is relevant to this conversation, which is that sometimes things that are fun and um, you know different and exciting for other people like going on vacation or you know the holidays can actually be really stressful when you have a chronic illness because it is a disruption in that routine and if you live with a chronic illness for and have learned how to manage it most likely there's a routine to that most likely you do things in a certain way that allows you to feel your best and I find that I always have to take a vacation after a vacation and it's sort of this holiday was different, but it would have, if it weren't COVID, it would have been a similar situation where I need time to recover from something that's supposed to be fun. And that can be challenging to deal with mentally to really come to terms with the fact that maybe in your mind, this idea of the holidays or this idea of going on vacation sounds like it's supposed to be really fun, but to really acknowledge that, oh, this is actually a little stressful for me too, and I need to work with that. Uh, and that's that's where. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Anne Marie. No, go ahead. I think it's such an important point that, and and this is going to sound really odd, but I think that's why COVID, in some ways, for me at least, and I think many others with chronic disease, it has allowed me to be my regulated routine kind of person because everyone has to be that way, and right. it, it's not odd to say no, I can't go and do that, I, I because of COVID restrictions. So normally I would set as a, as a principal, I don't do more than one social event a day. I do not want to do a lunch as well as a dinner or a cocktail. I just hate that. But if I have one to focus on, I can focus on it. And, and 
you know, COVID has allowed me to be much more in my routines because everyone is in a routine. And, and, and that's why I totally agree with you that holidays and, and vacations and travel. I love what, yeah. I love what Daniel just said because mm -hmm. he's so right. It, it goes right with holidays too, right? Vacation doesn't always seem like it's a vacation or holidays don't always seem like that when you're not feeling well, it almost, it's, it's a chore and it is stress because yeah. you are, you know, while people may understand your illness, during the regular times, during the holidays, they almost want to forget about it so that they can have a nice holiday. And I'm not, there's no judgment here, but it is true. You know, we deal with it every day, but they want to, they, people do want to break from, from it a little bit. I, I understand that as caregivers, I get it, but we don't get a break from it. So we have to find a way to manage it and to deal with the stress part of it. And that I, can be no, it's not always like we want to get a break from it. You know, that to me is the point is that do we really want to get a break for it? Because if you take a break from it and you have all that champagne or you have all that sugar and then you feel terrible. Mm -hmm. So and you know that based on experience. So why push someone to do it when you don't want to, right? It's so such yeah, a good yeah. point. That's such a good point. Cody, do you and have I, something to add to that? Yeah, just to, to what Daniel said, I really relate to that. Like, there's also the pressure to have fun. Like, that is always what I found challenging about holidays or vacations with a chronic illness. It's like there's this added pressure. We're on vacation. We're supposed to be having fun. Or it's the holiday time. We're supposed to be having fun. You're not supposed to not be feeling well. You know, it's there's just more pressure. And pressure is never good for anything. It's not good for our mental well-being. It's not good for our physical bodies. So I think that that's just, you know... I think this year obviously was very different. So it's a different conversation that we're having. But if it hadn't been, I think the conversation for me would have been about a lot about feeling that pressure to be well when maybe I'm not, you know, and I don't, we don't get to choose what, what days we feel better and what days we don't. And nobody gets to choose that. People with healthy bodies don't get to choose that. But unfortunately with a chronic illness, the, the windows narrower a lot of the times. So you yeah. are speaking what I just was talking about today about choice. Uh, you know, nobody chooses to, to have a chronic illness. We don't choose yeah. to have a mental illness. Those aren't choices we make. Our choice is to work through both of those, you know, mm -hmm. whether it be a physical or a mental illness, you're choosing to work through it by maintaining your health. That's the choice you have, but you don't have a choice to live with this. I actually remember when I first was diagnosed with MS and I kind of kept it quiet for a little bit because I was, you know, you have to process it and deal with it. And as I was, people were starting to see a change in me a little bit. And I remember getting invited to a party and I didn't really want to go, but I went anyways. And I was there for maybe an hour and I was like, I got to go. And everybody was like, where are you going? Why are you leaving? I can't believe you're leaving. I said, I don't feel good. I have to go. I, this is the noise was too much. You know, it was messing with my cognitive thinking. Like I could not focus. People were shocked that I was leaving but they also made me feel a lot of guilt and pressure for that. Mm -hmm. And I have learned through these past, you know, six years to let that go. Cause I have enough things. I'm Italian Catholic. I could be guilty about just about anything. <laughs> I do not want to feel guilty about my health. Like I have yeah. got to check those things off in my life. And I think the holidays in general, we need to remember that exactly what we're all saying here. Keep your routine. Don't break your trend and say, no, those are all okay. And after the holidays, remember, you took care of you and that's pretty powerful that you did that. Yeah. Yeah. We need to, we need to be more, I think, um, uh, be better to ourselves uh, and, and acknowledge that it is not easy. Uh, we're also, because we are used to routines and we're used to a schedule, um, we may never, we, we may not acknowledge that we're actually keeping it and it's not something that other people can do. So we should, we should reward ourselves a little bit for it. Daniel coming right in with another comment that I think yeah. is so important because all of us sitting here do have that invisible illness, right? Um, when people can't see it, they don't understand it. It's different when you're going through chemo and you're bald and people understand that, you know, you're going through something or, you know, it's, it's, it's an obvious, a visible illness, but invisible is a whole different ball of wax. I mean, people just can't understand it. And I can remember being in pain so desperately and you think, how can they not see it? Because you're vibrating from the inside with your pain. You, you think everybody can see it, but they can't. And it is exhausting dealing with that part of it. Yeah. And then you feel, do I really have the obligation to talk about myself with everyone and, and explain my weakness? You know, that's, that's, or whatever. It's maybe not a weakness. It's an alternative reality, but it, where it is a reality for, for me. And right. why do I have to expose myself every single time and, and, uh, and be different? So that's also hard. It's hard to be different and, and not just fit in. Yeah. So, Cody, do you want to add something? Add, no. I, think, I think in this conversation too is, is, 
you know, what this else, what else, you know, what Daniel said about invisible um, illness, which I, I personally have as well, um, redefining for myself what health is and what need, what I need to be happy has been a really big thing. And, you know, I think when chronic illness, I've been dealing with this for about 12 years, when it goes on for a while, you have to start to ask yourself the question, like, does my health need to be perfect in order to be happy? Do I need to be feeling 100% in order to enjoy this moment? Can I feel this pain and also enjoy this moment? Because it's going to be a real struggle if everything is dependent on feeling good and you're living with a chronic illness. So that's something that I've really um, exactly like that. Yeah. Does my health need to be perfect? I love that sentence. The answer I is no. What is perfect? Exactly. I mean, the answer is perfect. no. Yeah. I mean, the perfect, unfortunately, I mean, we don't want to get into this, but it's influenced by everything we see on television and all the, you know, all the products and this and that it's become a very, it's wellness has become very trendy. So it's, it's in our faces a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just to, for me to tell myself, like, I can be happy like this. Like I can be in pain frequently and really be very satisfied with my life. And that is okay. I do not have to keep striving. I do not have to wish things were different at, you know, at holiday time or on vacation. Like it's okay to be happy and be in pain at the same time. But I yes. think that means that you have reached a really uh, kind of a higher level because most people- Not at all the time, by yeah, the way. No, but most people would not have- Said that right. Most people yeah. would say that I can be happy with uh, pain, or I can be happy not being able to do things. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's that's a very nice acknowledgement, and it's just saying because I don't think perfect exists. No, and I also don't think normal exists. No. You know, everyone has some deficiency or some alternative, you know, way of dealing with life. And and if we can be happy in most of the time, no one can be happy all the time. If you're happy all the time, you're you're essentially a cow or something. I mean, we're more like an amoeba. You know, <laughs> you're a multicellular organism with a cognitive function. You can't be happy all the time. Right. No. And it's yeah. not a choice. I just was talking about this. Happiness is not a choice. You know, I think what we need to start talking about is what we're sa saying right here is healthier. Mm -hmm. I don't need to yeah. be happier. I need to be healthier. Yeah. And being yeah. healthier means both mind and body, which... Um, I actually like asking this question. I think it's perfect for this um, topic we're discussing. Knowing everything that you guys know right now that you've gone through and all the holidays you've gone through living with your chronic illness, what's one piece of advice you would tell yourself when you were first at your lowest during the holidays, especially? What's one piece of advice that you have learned through all of this? Um, I, I'll happily go first because I thought of it as we were talking and it's let go the perfection. You know, I grew up in this house where we didn't, it wasn't perfect, but it was immense. You know, there was tons of food. There was, the table was set beautifully. I have learned to let that go. This year we used plastic plates, which I think my grandmother probably rolled in her grave. I didn't make all the 20 different types of cookies. I made 16. I know that seems silly, but I let some of it go and that felt so good. And if I could tell myself that eight years ago when I was going through treatment and everything, to just let some of it go, I think I would have been a healthier person eight years ago than I am right now. You want to go, Cody? No, oh, please. I'm still thinking. Please okay. go. <laughs> For me, it's two things, but uh, they're both related. And um, the first one is don't be so focused on what you believe everyone else thinks and perceives. Uh, I'm highly uh, always uh, listening and I mean listening not just to words, but I'm constantly taking in what everyone else seems to think and feel. And that affects me a lot. And it makes me unhappy and it makes me try to change my way of being around my family, especially and around social settings. I want everyone to be happy. And I think if I, if I would focus less on that and just focus on what I am projecting, focus more on what I can control versus what everyone else is, you know, I think feeling, uh, I think I would be happier. And I've made many mistakes there. Yeah. I, That's my I, biggest one. You'll love this comment, Karen, before Cody jumps in, because it's a beautiful Swedish comment that you must know. Um, no, I'm gone. 
Yeah, going forward is so important. My grandmother always used to say, what are you looking backwards for? You're not going that way. <laughs> well, um, the Swedish word, because Jenny, I don't think uh, Cody and Amory know what lagom means. No. But lagom is, it doesn't exist in English. And it's a great word, but it, it, it means that it's absolutely, it's not perfect, but it's what works. Uh, so it's 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 not the absolute best. It's not the absolute worst. It's not the average. It just works. Mm, and, works. and 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 it's 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 used in Swedish a lot. This is lagom. This 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 kind of works for me. And lagom is different for different people. It's so a good word. It's a really good word. I love it. Just works. So Cody, did you, you think? Honey. Did I you did. Think it yeah, I would say it's not your fault. This is not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. I've spent a lot of time and still am working through the guilt that is associated. Oh, if I had only done this. Oh, if I had only did this differently. If I changed my diet this way or, you know, that way. Like, I am not to blame. I was doing the best I could in every single given moment. We're all doing the best we can in every single moment with the information that we have in that moment. Uh, if I had the knowledge I have now then, who knows? But I didn't, and that's fine. So really letting go of the guilt and the shame and the blame, uh, if I could have given that to myself earlier. But even even now saying that, it's like, well, I didn't, and that's okay too. You know, it's that's a really big piece for me. What three perfect tips to give somebody to let it go? It's okay. It's not your fault, and it's not perfect. Like those are beautiful sentiments, and I really do wish I would have known that back then. You know, I think it's powerful to to let yourself know that all of those things are okay, that this isn't your fault, that we are, you're gonna get through it, but it's not your fault. Because there is guilt around that. And I think that that's a whole other topic that we could have mm -hmm. a discussion on and maybe for next time. But yeah. I just wanna thank you, Cody, for joining, for joining us today on this Tuesday. Oh, thank you for having me, it's my pleasure. It was a really, really thank great you, conversation. Thank you. Um, Karin, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know we're all super busy, but it's really great to check in with ourselves, which I think this was a really good check-in for each of us and to check in with other yeah. people. And from the comments, it looks like people really did, res it did really resonate with them. And I'm, I'm glad we did it. So until thank next you, time, we'll thank be back. Thank you, Emery. Thanks, Thanks have a great week.